Scholars, I regret that I can't be with you today, but the lesson must go on. Welcome to day 29. Let's see what you're about to do. On our agenda for today, you should have uh, had the counselor's visit already, and so there's just one thing that we're doing today in our abbreviated class. We're looking at qualifying arguments. I'm going to do a lesson on that and a couple of short activities. Your homework for next time, we're continuing on with this expository essay number three. We're going to look at the next source called How School Taught Me I Was Poor by Jeff Sapp. Read that, create a or second annotated bibliography entry, and you may have some time in class today if you finish up your work to go ahead and get started on that. Your learning targets for this lesson, I can qualify an argument. This means I can properly and effectively reference sources in an essay. Let's talk about what qualifying arguments actually is. So far, we've read a number of arguments to determine what we agree with and what we disagree with. But what do you do when you come across an argument that you only partially agree with, or one which is sort of correct, but only under certain circumstances? This is the realm of qualification. Qualification is simply setting the limits of an argument. Uh, in your arguments, qualification is necessary to temper your claims so that you aren't trying to prove something so extreme it's impossible, and so you can shut down potential objections by narrowing in what you're really trying to argue. When you're responding to other arguments, qualification is finding where that argument is right and where it is wrong, finding where that line can be drawn. Let's take a closer look at qualifying your own arguments and what that looks like. Here's an example of an author qualifying his own argument. A key fact of white-collar crime is that we hear about only the very slim fraction of people who are caught. Most embezzlers lead quiet and theoretically happy lives. Employees who steal company property are rarely detected. With street crime, meanwhile, that is not the case. A mugging or a burglary or a murder is usually counted whether or not the criminal is caught. A street crime has a victim who typically reports the crime to the police, which generates data, which in turn generate thousands of academic papers by criminologists, sociologists, and economists. But white-collar crime presents no obvious victim. And that's from Dubner and Levitt's What the Bagel Man Saw. Um, here we see a number of instances where these authors have qualified or limited the claims they've made. Not all embezzlers, but most embezzlers lead quiet and not necessarily happy lives, but at least theoretically happy lives. Later on, they talk about how employees who steal company property are rarely detected. Not never detected, but rarely. With street crime, meanwhile, that is not the case. A mugging or a burglary or a murder is usually counted. Not never counted, but, uh, or not always counted, but usually, rather. So, qualifying your arguments can be as simple as offering language that helps temper your claims. Here's another famous example from Mark Twain in his Corn Pone Opinions. He must restrict himself to Corn Pone Opinions, at least on the surface. Here, Twain isn't just offering a little adjective or adverb to qualify a claim, he's like actually stating out the circumstances under which this preceding claim is correct, uh, acknowledging that in any, in any circumstances beyond this, this claim may not be correct. Yeah. So by simply paying careful attention to our wording, we can qualify a claim and make it more reasonable and thus easier for us to support in an argument. There are different ways to qualify an argument. You can qualify its quantity. Rather than saying all or every, you could say many, most, or some. You can qualify the frequency with which something happens, rather than saying always, uh, in this oftentimes, usually, or frequently happens. You can qualify the probability of something using terms like probably or unlikely. Or you can qualify the proof, or how something proves something. Instead of saying, this proves this, which is very absolute and difficult to, prove, difficult to support in your argument, uh, you can say, this suggests, or this indicates, or this seems to, or this points to, those sorts of things. When you're trying to qualify the arguments of other authors, that is, you see an argument another author has made and you uh, have a problem with it, you want to limit it because it is not entirely correct, um, here's what that might look like. 
You might see that uh, many education experts extol the benefits of participating in advanced placement courses, but surely this cannot be true for all students. AP courses uh, would likely only benefit those students who have and are willing to prioritize the time needed to fully participate. So it's assumed here that I've run into someone who has argued this before, that uh, there are great benefits to anyone who participates in advanced placement courses, but I need to limit that because I, I find a problem with that. Not all students could benefit, surely. Surely there are some like, uh, you know, uh, uh, some in uh, lower socioeconomic brackets who maybe have to work uh, full-time jobs outside of school just to support their families. Uh, obviously, those students are not going to thrive under the heavy course load of an AP course, uh, and they're not going to benefit from it. It's only going to take away from what they, knew to, uh, what they need to do uh, to help their families, that sort of thing. Here's another instance of qualifying another author's argument. H.L. Mencken's claim that the average American values his safety over his freedom is correct, but only when the loss of freedom doesn't interfere with the pursuit of pleasure. So here's kind of a position I'm taking on H.L. Mencken's claim that the average American values freedom over safety. I've made sort of a concession here as well. I've acknowledged that it's correct, but only under these circumstances here. So that's another way that I can qualify another author's argument. All right, that's it for this lesson. Go and head out to our Google Classroom where you'll see a new assignment. Let me see if I can pull it up. Here it is, right here. Yeah, Qualifying arguments, once again, there's a Google Doc to click on. And this is your copy to type on. It's already made for you. You don't need to make a copy yourself. And you just type directly on this document responding to what I've asked you to do and click Submit when you are done. Thank you so much, scholars. You have until the end of class to finish this up. This is not homework. You must finish by the end of the class because this is a relatively short assignment. If you finish up early, please go ahead and start working on your homework. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time I'm in class.